everybody, welcome to the final coverage of PvP Season 2016 here on Games for Gamers on YouTube. I'm your host, Napalm Dawn. Let's dive right into it. Unfortunately, I no longer have the actual footage of the ending of the season and the recruitment process. For that, you can see it on Twitch. Uh, in the next few days, you can catch it as the last broadcast. But if it's a few days beyond that, and there's other broadcasts, you'll see it there in the archives. Basically, I wanted to export it for the Twitch stream that I was doing, but unfortunately, due to all the load errors that were happening at the time, uh, it made it a very, very long video, because I was constantly having to refresh the game, and it was just broken as hell. And it was like 20 minutes, and there was not a lot of content in it, because I constantly had to reload, so... Uh, let's jump into what I used on offense and defense, then we'll get into the rewards, and we will see Colleen in action. I've already got her up to level 4, thanks to the simulator. So on offense, pretty much all season, it was Elsa, Haith, and my tactical agent. Elsa came in for ASG and did a bang-up job, mostly with her Despair and Soulfire removing buffs when there was no magic warding. I ran her more aggressively than defensively. She had the Sandy ISO and she had the Triggered ISO. The gear pretty much the whole season was the Quit, the Lantern of Doom, the Weather Control Device, and the Scroll of Runamaroth. The Experiment came in and replaced the Satellite Support uh, somewhat into the season. The reason being is I was no longer running ASG, so if I was disoriented, uh, I did have some things that I could do that were AoE. And the experiment was very necessary to counter the debuffs that the Lunacy puts on you. Clearing the Lunacy requires two actions. It requires using the experiment to get rid of the uh, Maddened and everything like that. All of the red box bordered debuffs. But then you have to use another clean, like from Hafe or from the Agent, to get rid of the straining. This doesn't remove the straining. It just removes the anti-subtle and the anti-stealthy. <clears throat> Defending team was the same thing that ended PvP Season 25 for me. It was Kurth and Emma, Infiltrator and Bruiser. I, I know this is the douche defense team. This was the very popular team of the season. However, I was using it before they got uh, ridiculously popular. And, of course, before the nerf to Haith. That's why the scroll is in there. The scroll was in there to uh, make it so they could not clean the debuffs. But, you know, basically with, with Haith and, and the protection that he provided being thoroughly dismantled, uh, this team skyrocketed in popularity. Now, I skipped this slot because this slot changed a few times throughout the season. It was the custom, well not the custom, it was the magnetic field dynamo, the free action. That started to lose, so I went to the channeling glove to work off of Bane from Smothering Shadow. It did okay, but nothing to write home about. I then went over to... The Remote Booster, which provides the rather sizable heal, still was losing a little bit. Then I switched over to the Overwatch Protocol, and they started to do uh, really well. My plateau that I would have been happy with was about 1850, but defense enabled me to get my highest rating of all time, which was 2079, edging out PvP Season 25 slightly. Now, something that I want to point out that I honestly think you should all be aware of, and you should look at yourself. Go to tournament history for yourself, and look at your past tournaments. This will give you an idea of the population that we've had the whole time. So, look at this over here in the middle of uh, August and July. This was the Spider Girl season. I ranked 1793, uh, or my rating was 1793, but my rank in all of PvP was 6,362. Then we come one season in the future, and I maintain almost the exact same rating. 
uh, about another hundred gap or so, roughly, just like this, in the amount of total attacks and everything my team went through. But my rating is 2,000 better. But my rank is 2,000 better. This goes and tells you something. This season and this season, either not a lot of people were really ahead of me, but this season a lot of people were ahead of me. Or, these two seasons over here were not very populated, but this one was. Now, yes, this is the Elite ISO. All three heroes are pretty solid, but Spider-Man Noir definitely has the highest popularity. So, what's going on here? Why was this season so ridiculously populated? Well, now we look at the last two. In season 25, my rating was 2013. My rank was... 1450. We look over here at season 26. Look at the glaring difference between the two. Again, about a hundred gap between the wins and losses. Uh, considerably more volume over here. Up about 60 in both cases. But look at this rank. 856. I placed 856 in the world for not that much of a different rating. And the rating between my last two battles, so at 2060, I was like 996 or something like that. I took a huge jump in that one defensive win. That goes to tell you that either not a lot of people were ahead of me or there just is a very, very low population of people playing this season. And you know what? I believe it. A lot of people were saying, hey, play Dom. You really screwed up bad with this patch. You nerfed a lot of things. You nerfed people who should even be on your radar like thing. Like why? Why would you even spend a calorie of energy looking at thing and then turn around and nerf him? Ridiculous. So I believe the play dom populace in this game told them that's it you fucked up we're done with you we don't want to work with you that's it period and they made good on it and they bailed or they didn't pvp i believe it and that screen there definitely shows me uh the proof that i'm looking for it's just like world of warcraft legion was announced around thanksgiving at blizzcon it was announced for maybe the latest of September 2016. We have no new content until then. And you know what? The general Activision Blizzard WoW populace said, Fuck you, we're out. And they meant it. They dropped millions of subscribers and now Blizzard doesn't release their subscriber numbers anymore. Play it on better learn and they better get their act together. So, got my 10 gold. We got the Dark Energy Blade. Melee, Slashing, Energy. Energy means it will heal you with the Rectifier. Follow-up attack. Guaranteed hit. Ignores defense. It is a protect weapon. And then we have the power inside and the power of dark energy. It sounds like um, Power Rangers there a little bit. But it, the power is always better inside you. Uh, but we'll see what that's like. We'll see this in action. We have the infused tech suit. As always, don't make the mistake that I occasionally make and think it's in your inventory. You have to research it first. And then we have Colleen Wing. So let's go ahead and uh, see these guys in action. Colleen, uh, I think Colleen is going to make a PvP splash. I think she will go well with Paragon Exploiters and I think she will go really well with Bleeders. Really well with Bleeders. Uh, a very good defense that I see with Colleen is Ares and the Scroll of Runamara. Now, as we wait for this to load up, what was my season like? Well, P5 Colossus, P5 Emma, Kurth, permutations of those three, uh, Spider-Man Noir, Rocket Raccoon, but not too bad. Uh, Pestine Enchantress, but they dropped off tremendously for me this season. Some Red Hulks, uh, occasionally Jean Grey and Emma, but um, the, the tanks were pretty much Colossus the whole way through. Kurth was in tons of them. 
one of the most inventive teams that I ever ran into on defense this season, and really big kudos to these guys for creating it. Ares and Black Knight, with Black Knight having the unexhaustible ISO, and uh, I forget, I think the agent was tactical, maybe. But because of the scroll of Runamaroth, uh, they installed Bleeds 2.0 on me, and that was that was it, and I couldn't clean it. Uh, Despair came from Ares. You couldn't heal that up. Yeah, I got beat by that team, but I was really happy. Kudos to that defense. It worked, and it was something new. It was something unique, and it was something somebody thought of. They planned that, and they planned it well. Definitely proud of that person. Happy to see it. I also won against, but it was close, a Star Lord Howard the Duck team, Team Star Duck. And, uh, yeah, ridiculous how that match worked. If you give Howard the Duck the unexhaustible tactician ISO, um, it was, it really, really cements Howard the Duck's prowess. He's very, very strong with that ISO because it means. Unlike, say, Quicksilver, where you can exhaust him out of his turns, or you can exhaust a team out and Star-Lord's 12% of a plan won't work. No, Howard walks right through that and gets a lot of extra turns. We have the Dark Energy Blade, and we have the suit. Now, the suit, I believe, is best suited, no pun intended, if you have the Black Widow Age of Ultron ISO, the one that says all your single target attacks are stealthy. That means anything that isn't stealthy now is, and you don't have to wait for combat reflexes. I have the Restored Wellrod Silence Pistol, which is stealthy in and, in and of itself, to give combo setup stealthily to Howard the Duck. Now we're not really going to be able to see Colleen shine against this, because they are unbleedable mechanical world box but you'll get to see what she does so Howard goes first I'm gonna have him drink some alcohol then I'm gonna have him give the team the neurotrope now you'll notice what I have here is that I have tech upgrade because there are two techs in this slot the neurotripe is going to give Howard the duck tech upgrade He's going to use that tech upgrade when he uses his Coulson BFG, the only other tech he has in the slot. So there goes reinforcements. Howard apparently wants to follow up. Now I use the Coulson's BFG and the damage is boosted and he follows up. He's also getting lucky. But yeah, Team Starduck did very, very well. Was pretty impressed by that one too, but very, very frustrated that it was so close. And I actually, I mean, I baited Howard the Duck into everything he did. I kept trying to hopefully, you know, exhaust him, but that whole unexhaustible ISO snuck up. So, Miento Massacre. This is my favorite ability graphically in the game right now. I love Psylocke's level 1, my favorite move in the entire game, but this one, in terms of an entire screen attack, is great. I'm going to turn on the volume for this because I want to hear what this one sounds like. That's exactly what I hoped it'd sound like. It is such an amazing move. It has a real anime feel to it, like when somebody's about ready to get stabbed with a sword and the screen goes black and you hear swink, and the screen goes on black and somebody's just standing there for a second, all of a sudden you get like a jet of blood from the carotid. Yeah, that, I love that move. Really, really love watching that. It is Ares 2.0. It does what Ares does with Crush Your Enemies. It removes buffs. It will remove the Mystic. It will remove the Lantern. And unlike Soulfire, it is not magic based, so it is unavoidable, except for in the face of the Scroll of Aknazak. Now here, I can apply combo setup to one of these Sentinels, and Howard the Duck will stun them.
That, well, yep, there we go. That follow-up has already stunned him. So now that he's stunned, I'm just going to go hit this tactician. Howard is a lot stronger than I would have given him credit before. I mean, he is... He is not just the little passive team buffer that I thought he would be, kind of like the original Beast or Angel. The dude's got some chops. I mean, fucking quack chops over here. He's really good. We didn't really get to see the blade on that one, but... Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see the blade do its thing. The blade is really a gigantic meta killer right now. It counters so much of what's in the existing meta. I feel like Playdom has made Marvel Avengers Alliance a giant social experiment. I feel like they are almost puppeteering the meta the way they want it rather than how it might actually be. So there was the sword creating the protect situation. Uh, no sign of an extra turn. So you might be wondering why am I running the Savage Axe in the Primitive Sphere? Well these two give me a stacking buff called Strength of the Savage Land and uh, I f Savage Strength and Strength of the Savage Land. They buff my attack tremendously. Oh, we made, there it is. Savage Strength and uh, Touch of the Savage Land. These two stack. So whatever my attack is, it's buffed by 20% for having these. The suit says stealthy things are buffed by 30%. So if we do the math correctly, and the game does it correctly, all of my stealthy attacks should be buffed by 50% of the predicted damage. Now, using the Dark Energy Blade doesn't really do anything other than a standard attack. But if we look... We have Deflect, high chance to negate single target gun or ranged attacks. Bye bye Spider-Man and War. Chance to reflect the damage when negating the attacks. Dominate the weak, high chance to prevent and counter enemy buff and debuff actions. Enemies countered by Dominate the weak gain a mind control. So... If you ran this with the Amplified Rifle, you would shut down a team so bad. The Amplified Rifle might pre-fire a Disorient, and this might pre-fire a Mind Control. What this means is Emma's Unlock Potential could be a victim. Colossus's Steel Curtain could be a victim. Actions from the Agent could be a victim. Uh, Howard's Neurotripe could be a I mean, there's so much that this thing may actually mess up. It's going to be very interesting. So you can see, it, it's, you know, it doesn't do a lot of damage when you use it. It's sort of like the Mystic. It's there to do something, just maybe not the attack. So, we counter over there, but nothing fancy happened. So far, nothing crazy. So, we're going to go ahead and anime our way for this first attack and remove their buffs. There's mind control. However, it doesn't do anything against these guys because, well, they're robots. But if you notice, it is following up on everybody that Colleen hit. Kind of crazy, huh? But and I did get the extra turn. So it was follow, following up on two of the three people that Colleen hit. That means, similar to Rocket Raccoon and Spider-Man War. Uh, you know how Rocket, if he uh, AoEs the team and uh, the agent like joins in with a rapier or whatever, or like you swing the Devourer and the Devourer hits the whole team, Spider-Man Noir and Union Jack follow up on each individual person hit. Well, that's what this does. It's the same basic principle. So if you use lots of AoE, especially what would be glorious would be stealthy AoE, like uh, Elsa's Boomstick. If you apply that magic equals stealthy ISO to her, and she rips up with that Boomstick, yeah, that sword might follow up on everybody. Sadly, we're fighting robots. We don't really get to see how it works. 
So next round, I'm going to try to go ahead and use a normal weapon. And we'll see the extra... Well, there we go again. Look at that. It's proccing pretty well. And there's my extra turn. So now we're going to hit this guy pretty hard with the Savage Axe. If you can imagine this suit having proper, you know, stat isos and everything, the buff that you may get. Wow, another follow-up. He even follows up on quick action. <coughs> that's, that's pretty dangerous. And that should result in a stun. That should definitely result in a stun. Uh, it didn't seem to. It should have. But the restored Wellrod pistol, pistol that you see me using there can be farmed. I highly suggest you pick it up if you like working with Howard the Duck. It is a stealthy gun that applies combo setup. Kind of go figure on that one. How does a gun apply combo setup? But apparently it does. You can farm it. It's in a chapter. Could be interesting to stealthily apply combo setup uh, for Howard to then go ahead and turn around and exploit and create a stun. Also, don't forget the Kara Fist does the exact same thing. So to all you people who slotted a Kara Fist, I give you Nelson's laugh from The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, I'll just open up with Smothering Shadow. By the way, in case I didn't say so, the background music for today is the World of Warcraft original OST. This is the music from Vanilla. There is my extra turn. Kind of crazy. You can see it's still the same turn because there's no new options available. So now, even if I wasn't going to be stealthy, I now am because I attacked a tactician. We don't have a blaster over there, so we will do Neurotripe. And I will do the Colson BFG on the Scrapper. See that hit? That's big. And he gets a follow-up. And we get the another follow-up. And we get another follow-up. I mean, it's crazy. Can you imagine running that kind of an agent with, like, a uh, Star Duck? Wow, this is strong. If that was actually mind controlling those people, the whole... And look, I'm up again. I'm still in the first round. We'll just, you know, go after that tactician again. I mean, I'm not saying you should buff the attack so much from the savage items. By the way, the flamethrower from the blade spec ops also has a uh, attack increasing buff that stacks. It adds like 15% or something, but crazy. You know where this might really, really work? It might really work if you go with the mystical resonant combo and say that everything is magic and everything that is magic heals you. Um, if you're popping that sword so much, you're gonna be healing yourself like crazy. Yeah, that would be a heal right there with the mystical, uh, the mystical and resonant iso combination. So I'm gonna stealthily apply combo setup. Hopefully Howard the Duck will gain a little bit of stamina from his Ductini. Wow, I have a feeling that's gonna get toned back a little bit. I really do. It's it seems like it's a lot, and the fact that you gain an extra turn off of it. So this should be a stun. And if he had had pressure points, well, no stun. Not really too sure what's going on there. Wow, that is procking a lot. That might work out really well on its own with like Union Jack, Rocket, Spider-Man War type teams. Psylocke and Quicksilver. Cool. Wow, Psylocke and Quicksilver would be crazy with that thing. 
So I'm going to run to the simulator real quick so that hopefully we can see uh, real people getting affected by this. I'm going to go past Sin and work on another fight that has ads because the Sin fight has one robot, the exoskeleton. Everybody in this one is a, a human. So let's see what happens here with the sword. Unfortunately, we don't have a blaster, but if uh, Howard was 15, you can always activate the tactical bonus in round two anyway. So I think this removes buffs, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, it doesn't. And I get an extra turn right in front of my turn. Crazy. Alright, so what we want to do is I want to go ahead and stealthily apply combo setup to the BR Theta. And we'll put magic on them. So let's go ahead and apply the Neurotripe. And we will do the BFG, which since, uh, if he follows up, he'll stun him. He didn't follow up. Okay, so, for Colleen, we'll just do that. That's a pretty sizable attack. I mean, that's a lot of damage for, uh, a level 2 AoE. All right, so there's the mind control. Let's see if he goes after Maximus. Nope, he goes for me. But because he's mind control, there is still the chance that Maximus will attack him on his next turn. Now, Maximus is... He's not listed as... Yeah, he is listed as Relentless. So we'll just see if we can still get that combo setup stun. I'm pretty sure how the Duck's just going to kill him. Matt up drop. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're disoriented over there. We don't have a way of cleaning it. So Howard may screw this up, but we'll see. He's gonna kill him if it hits him. Well, he went for my agent, unfortunately. Wow, that's the evasion of that suit, man. That's Did you see those two dodges in a row like that? I don't have any special buffs. Not too sure what that attack does. Alright, so stealthily applying combo setup. Now, we know we're not going to stun Maximus, but it's still going to be fun to do. If that was a normal mob, that should have created a stun at that point. Use a Dutini. When Howard is unexhaustible in PvP, he gets turns for days. There's nothing... That was stealthy. There's nothing stopping him. And if you attack him, you run the risk of giving him an extra turn. And what's pretty cool about Colleen's level 2 is that it's stealthy, so there's nothing stopping you from using that at the beginning of combat and wiping out buffs. And it will take out a Mystic Shroud, and it will take out a Lantern. So by all means, have at it. If you don't have a lot of offensive cleanses like a Black is Void or a, uh, a Scroll of Angelob or Runamaroth, Use Colleen. Use Colleen and Ares and you double the chances uh, that you can remove a Shroud. If your agent does have something, hell, all three of you could do it. That means turn order would never affect you. And look at that team up. It's really good. So there you go, guys. There is the wrap-up of PvP Season 26. We've seen the suit. We've seen the character. We've seen the weapon, although we actually haven't seen... Uh, the weapon create a mind control situation or possessed yet. Uh, I'm going to predict that this weapon's going to get scaled back a little bit in some of its passives. It just seems to proc a lot.
but I do like the fact that it has the chance to proc up on people hit by an AoE. That's nice to see. Really increases the threat level of it. So, take care everybody. I hope you got the rank that you wanted to in PvP. I know we had some CVEs on the last day. But again, people should know by now. Get your rank, get your plateau the way you want it the night before. And don't, don't make it tight. Give yourself a good buffer. Just learn from this. Peace out, people. Have a good one.